check out the Fuso starting grid now for race number 15 of the Championship Series. And Jamie Winkup starts again from the pole position. It's an all Red Bull Racing Australia front row lockout from three. Two podiums yesterday for Fabian Coulthard, Lockwood Racing. Mark Winterbottom is the first of the Fords for Pepsi Max. And then what a great job, Rick Kelly, Jack Daniels Racing in the Nissan. And Rick will be battling with Jonathan Webb. And then it's his teammate Shane Van Gisberg and Jason Bright. Good to see him up there. He's got great tyre stock today. Todd Kelly, the second of the JD Nissans in there. And from position number 10, it'll be Garth Tander. Great to see the Holden Racing team in amongst it. And that was a season best qualifier for Todd Kelly in the Jack Daniels Racing Nissan up in ninth as we move our way through midfield. David Wall, Wilson Security Racing, has the Frenchman Alex Premer in his second year of V8 Supercars next to him. Main game debut for Chaz Mostert, just 21 years of age. He is a superstar of the future. Made his arrival on the V8 big stage, if you like, at our last event in WA. Tony D'Alberto, Team Highflex. That's Russell Ingle, the enforcer. He likes to go hard in this sport, and he's got that reputation. He's been around for more than 500 and 20 races now. Davey Reynolds and Alex Davison, and then Murrow Engel, the SP Tools Racing Erebus Motorsport, Mercedes AMG E63 has Tim Blanchard next to him. On board here with James Courtney, and remember again, if you weren't uh, watching our coverage yesterday, compulsory pit stop required in this race and the race to come later on today, and the window opens for that opportunity to change tyres, lap 10 and beyond. Some people yesterday chose to change all four wheels of tyres. Some were changing two rears only. Some were changing the loaded side of the car two only. So we'll see how that strategy play runs out today. Guys, the teams have travelled a long way to be here, but make no mistake, this is not a holiday. Brad Jones, you don't often see with the fun face off and the game face on, but he just pulled the team together, his crew, and gave them a great rev up about how important today is and how close they are to doing something really good here on this circuit. Yeah, it's a great point because this is a very important race for Fabian Coulthard. He qualified pole position yesterday, he made a bad start and he put himself too far back. And you've got to get off the line in these cars. They're very high power, small tyres. They're hard to get away. And if he gets a good start, he can put some pressure on his pace in the race. was very good. He's just got to get up and attack these Red Bull cars. Mark Dutton with his back to us, just calling Jamie Wincup into the precise location that he needs if he doesn't want to give a millimetre away at the start of this race. It's an instant climb when they get off the line. 24 and a half metres of elevation up to turn one and then it drops away at roughly 20 metres as well. It's Damien White, the general manager of motorsport for V8 Supercars. He will have control of the start. Medical car slots in behind us. The view from Mark Ritterbot, Pepsi Max flag. crew, FPR Ford, but it's Red Bull at the front. And the big question today will be, can they stop this relentless charge of Jamie Winkup, who gets away well. Winterbottom tries to shoot through the middle. And Winterbottom is putting pressure on Winkup straight away. Winterbottom got the best start of the front group, for sure. Loud out the oil. He got caught. Loud just lost two spots. Fabian Coulthard will go into third spot from there. That really hurt Lowndes. He slipped up on that oil there. There was a lot of oil soak on the road, and it's dropped him back into position four. Murrow Engel, by the way, was stopped for a long time on the starting line. He finally did get away in the Mercedes. What a great shot as they snake down to turn 11. And it's on. Winterbottom's trying to get down the inside of Winkup. We saw the contact and the drama between these two guys in New Zealand. And we see this often. Mark Winterbottom knows that he, if you're going to get past Jamie Winkup, you have to do it early. But right now he's got more pressing matters in the name of Fabian Coulthard. Good job, Mark Winterbottom. He hung on to it. Then it was sliding wildly. But Coulthard's got the incentive up the inside. They swap paint momentarily. Let's see what happens when they run side by side here. And Fabian had to yield through the fast right-hander. But Winterbottom, three quarters back, had a lot of oversteer in the mid-corner, and he stayed with it. Remember, the tyres are cold, the brakes are cold. Everybody's finding their feet, understanding the balance. And now, as temps and pressures build, Lowndes is coming back. And this always happens. The guys battle that hard that it makes Winkup's job easy. 
Wickup has now got five or six car lengths gap to this battle for second position. So first time around, the order, Jamie Winkup, Mark Winterbottom, Fabian Coulthard, one, two, three, Craig Lowndes, started second in fourth. Then it's Rick Kelly, Jonathan Webb, Garth Tan, Jason Bright, Shane Van Gisbergen, and James Courtney making up our ten. Rick Kelly was under threat from Jonathan Webb as they came onto the straight, but he held position all the way up to turn one. So that's good. Stays in that mix of cars that are battling for third, fourth, fifth, etc. Rip a part of the circuit, turns three, four, five, and six down to the modified part of the circuit, the national circuit, where they go snaking through seven, eight, nine, ten, and then rejoin the track proper at 11. On board now with Winterbottom, that's Fabian right behind. Just have a look at the way these guys go about this. There's a couple of different lines in this complex middle section of the track. This is where Coulthard almost got by last lap. There's a great opportunity down the inside here, and Winterbottom covers. He blocks him. Winterbottom needs to make sure that he doesn't lose this spot now because Fabian probably hasn't got any better pace at this part of the race, but he needs to hold his position. What a difference a start makes. Mark Winterbottom getting away well, racing well through the first several corners. It's put him in track position now. And Many of the guys will tell you that their race pace isn't too bad in the front half of the field relative to those at the very front, but very often they lose out for track position. So now Winterbottom's got it. He's 0.8 of a second behind Wincup, and he's got to try and close down that margin that everybody gave to Wincup in the opening lap. Coulthard's led the fastest lap of the race at 1 minute 36.3 as they now start to work turn two. Upshifting fourth to fifth in the right-hander here at two, building pace, staying with fifth gear until they get further down the hill. Then it's fourth, then ultimately back to third as it tightens up, and a mistake, a big mistake there for Wincup, and that's allowed Winterbottom to get right with him. So Jamie had a moment as he tried to climb the curbs down there, and the Ford Falcon is right on the back of the GM Holden Commodore product. This is on. This is going to be great. Winterbottom's got to use his head now. He's got to get around this next double right complex and down the inside at the left-hander. He's got to do this in the spot we've seen so much overtaking. This is the area. It's just a little bit too far back. Kelly's staying with that group as well. He's just in behind Lowndes there at the moment. There's the two battle groups inside the Ford Performance Racing Garage. Bottom right, Red Bull Racing Australia. Top right, Adrian Burgess, Mark Dutton, James Small, engineer for... Mark Winterbottom and Tim Edwards' team principal was in the background there as well. Point three officially is the computer margin on timing between Winkup and Winterbottom. They're exiting turn 19. Surprisingly uphill in the run to turn 20 as they come back to greet us on the pit straight. Here is the replay of the start. Well, Mark Winterbottom had a look in the middle here, but then he decides to stick left. You're riding with him on the right-hand side. If there wasn't a car in the way, he'd have led them into Absolutely. turn one. He had a ripper start. And bad luck for Craig Lowndes at the top of the crest there with that oil slick and the concrete dust over it and flicked the rear of the car out. This is the little mistake that you spoke oh, about. It was the second bobble. So the car caught the kerb on the exit and it flicked him wide. It bounced him off the race line and he immediately lost that two or three car length cushion that he had from Mark Winterbottom. And Winterbottom looks aggressive today. He's got the car working better for sure and he's feeding this out. Jamie Wincup as they come off the national circuit. Back to the Grand Prix circuit, a mistake here for Wincup. This opens up a big opportunity for Winterbottom and he gets down the inside and makes it stick. So does Fabian Coulthard. Wincup goes one to three. Winterbottom is your new leader. Great stuff, great racing. Fabian Coulthard took that opportunity, filled the gap. And that was a good move by Winterbottom to take the lead. It's Mark Winterbottom's 32nd birthday tomorrow. He's already getting messages back home from Australia because of the time difference, but this is what he wants. He hasn't won a race in the V8 supercars for exactly 12 months. Matty, are Texan fans getting into V8 supercars? Well, you should have heard the roar when Mark Winterbottom got that done. They are into it, and they're here in big numbers today. They're loving it. It leads by 0.4 of a second now. Fabian Coulthard, what a start. Wink up and lounge on the front row of the grid. Three laps in, then out positions three and four. He's got pace. Look at the fans. They're loving it. Ford fans are digging this. 
the margin is exactly 0.3 of a second. Coulthard did the fastest lap of the race, but quickly eclipsed by Scotty McLaughlin back in 13th at 135.3. You're waking up to your V8 supercars back home on this workday Monday. Well, I hope you're wide awake now. Stay with us. This one's really on. And cars 7, Todd Kelly and 34. Alex Premer, the Frenchman, are under investigation for an incident. Turn 14, lap 2. I don't think it's going to be the last investigation today. So here we go with Craig Lowndes. We're looking at him from the rear bumper of Jamie Wincup and Lowndes awkwardly down the inside. He didn't quite get the car up far enough. Jamie gave him space. But for some reason, Wincup's just having a little struggle here at the moment. He's just lost a little bit of rhythm and momentum and he's now well exposed to his teammate. He's had a couple of awkward bounces off the curbs, Wincup. So that was Mark Dutton. The message is if Craig's got the pace, let him be, let him go. And he's just done that. So he's immediately responded. Good, mature decision. Now he's got Rick Kelly on. If you said to Rick Kelly at the beginning of the year when the Nissan Alderman was launched in Melbourne at Flemington, the home of the Melbourne Cup, that he would be racing a Red Bull, racing Australia Holden Commodore by the time we got to the fifth event of the season. He would have laughed at you. Absolutely. He's been an incredible development part. And a lot of pressure now on for Winterbottom with Coulthard coming at him. That was really high quality racing with those two guys when they were able to put that manoeuvre on Jamie Winkup. Winkup clearly hasn't got the pace that he had yesterday, but this is very, very good speed for Mark Winterbottom as he leads race 15 of our championship. All of a sudden, that racing margin that Winterbottom had has disappeared. Scorching Sunday afternoon here in Austin, Texas, as we welcome you back to race 15 of the championship. Five laps in now, six laps in, and there has been another change in the ad break because Jamie Winkup has been rounded up and passed by his teammate, Craig Lowndes. The orders were from Mark Dutton, who's Jamie's engineer, said to him, don't hold up our teammate. If he's got better pace, let him through. And that's exactly what's happened. So the pace has fallen away from our pole sitter. Winterbottom leads by 0.3 of a second over Fabian Coulthard, and Lowndes is now trying to pull them back in. And Winterbottom had tremendous pace a couple of laps ago, but all of a sudden, some of that's evaporated, and Coulthard is very, very close here to being able to mount a challenge for the lead of the race. Because talking in the break, that it's an extraordinary performance for Jack Daniels Racing and Nissan. If you'd said to Rick Kelly at the launch of that Nissan team at Flemington, the home of the Melbourne Cup at the beginning of the season, that he would be racing Jamie Wincup, the reigning champion, and here's that replay for the pass between the teammates, he would have said, no way. In the fifth event of the year, they're in amongst it, and that's great for the category. Well, not only that, Neil, have a look. Three manufacturers in the top five. Now, when you see Jamie Wink up uncharacteristically losing a bit of pace at this stage of the race, thought I'd ask Roland Dane, uh, you got some feedback for us, mate, on his drama? Uh, probably something to do with the fact he said he had a long pedal going to the grid, which didn't feel 100%. So I don't think it's terrible, but it's just enough that it's so competitive that it just probably takes the edge off. He made a little error in three, four, five on the second or third lap, and uh, he's probably being conservative. And for those at home, what that means, rather than saying a long pedal, when he puts his foot on the pedal, it doesn't, it's not there. The pressure's not there where he needs it, it's down further. And when you're looking for hundreds of an inch, hundreds of a, a, a second, I'm sorry, uh, very, very critical. The pedal needs to be where it needs to be. And Mark, we were talking earlier in the day about brake stress around here. Already, this ranks amongst the top five circuits in terms of brake temperature, heat and wear. It's very hard on the brakes. And a lot of drivers last night talking about front brake fade and rear brakes, therefore overpowering the balance of the car under brakes. Now, the fastest lap of the race, meantime, Craig Lowndes. Look at how he's brought that leading two cars back in touch with his front bumper. So he's done a 35-0. He was half a second quicker on the last lap than Winterbottom and Coulthard. So he's right back in touch with these guys. It's cooled down for a moment between first and second, but perhaps just for a moment. 
that last lap was the quickest lap again. So he's gone back to back. A little bit of a dice here for Jonathan Webb, who sneaks on the inside of Rick Kelly. So Jono Webb now moves up. Rick was just struggling to try and hold on to Jamie Winkup. Hence the top three were starting to pull away a bit. Incoming. It's a good job by Jonathan Webb then because Rick saw him coming. Oh, Scott Pye's gone round at the top of the hill. That's between turns one and two. He was looking for an adventure-free weekend after all the troubles in Tasmania and Western Australia. So this is David Wall. Contact. Oh, that was awkward. That could have resulted in a roll for the Wilson security car. That's a big hit. Probably some reasonable damage to both of those cars. And probably, if you look at the blame of that one, it's probably a 50-50 one. David was up there far enough. Scott was very wide, so visibility was hard on that style of corner. And contact inevitable when you get in that far at turn one. Only one Ford has stood on the top step at the podium this far this season. That was Will Davis. It can Mark Winterbottom join him again today. Jamie Wincup now recovering slightly. He's just done the fastest lap of the race of 1 minute 34.8. It might simply be that he needed to find the right front and rear anti-roll bar balance in that car, get the brake balance right, and then get his mind balance right as well because Mark, he, cop he got out of rhythm in those first couple of laps, and you, you know what it's like. You've only got to bobble over a curb the wrong way and have a couple of things happen. And the way the category works at the moment, three of your best mates will just literally belt you around the ears, pop out the other side and take some while to recover and get the rhythm and balance going again. Sure, Neil. And the other part of that is that sometimes it's a good sign when cars aren't fast at the very start of the race. Sometimes when the car comes on through the race, it means that it looks after the tyres better. And wink up after the last lap, fastest lap of the race, as you said, it may be that it's actually forging forward a little bit. Maybe it just gets into a, a groove and, as you said, Jamie gets his brain around driving it with whatever the problem is today. Cars 3 and 34. Tony Delberto and Alex Prema under investigation for an incident at Turn 15. And that incident we saw previously at the top of the hill. That was uh, David Wall and Scott Pye. That's going to be looked at post-race. Jason Wright. He's up to eighth position. Good job. Jason Bright today compared to where the car was yesterday. Nice. Nice. This battle is just getting some cold air. Still not too cold. I was about to say that's a relative term. He's back again, isn't he? So he's done something there. That's our mega wall for the Austin 400. A bit of activity in pit lane. Remember, this is a compulsory pit stop race. They must come in at some stage. Race control yet to be activated. Mark Winterbottom, point three. Five of a second lead over Fabian Coulthard. Pace has come back to Jamie Wincup, who's collected the fastest lap of the race now, 134.8. So he's now back in the top four pitcher. And we're not very far away from the window opening for those that choose to grab a stop now. If they feel like they're being held up by traffic, they'll try and get tyres on and look for the undercut opportunity. So this battle pack that we're looking at here involves Jason Bright. Now here's Mark Winterbottom, Pepsi Max Ford Falcon doing some motocross work there over the top of the kerb. So he's the race leader by 0.3 of a second. So Winterbottom, Coulthard, then Lowndes, Wincup, Webb, Kelly. This is McLaughlin who's in the 13th position at the moment. And McLaughlin looking at the rear wing of James Moffat's Nissan Alba in the Norton colours. So now window opens and the corresponding pit stops occur. So clear in, run in fast, clear run in. Winterbottom, Wing Cup, Tanda. Three of the contenders. You can see that there's also McLaughlin and Caruso, David Wall in as well. Watch for whether they do rears or loaded side or all four. Yesterday's stops, 
Nick Piala one second slower than Triple Eight. He may Stop. be able Clear to jump him in the stop. Ah, oh. mistake. Clear wheel. This okay. will go, be go, costly. Go, 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 go. Watching the wall, watching wall, watching wall. Okay, out. Oh. Out. All the way out, all the way out. There you go. That's just chaotic. Couldn't that have been worse. He's ended up behind Garth Panda. In leading the race, he'll pop out of that group now, fifth or thereabouts, or sixth. Remember, there's a heap of them that haven't stopped yet. Two thirds of the field yet to stop. And uh, oh, it's, it's going to be uh, under the, the scene under that helmet. It's going to be one of extreme frustration. We said it at the very start. He knew the only opportunity really you get when Jamie Wing comes in this kind of form is to take him down early. But now he's taking himself down. Fourth performance racing crew couldn't get that right rear off, and they couldn't get the car away. Little mistakes add up to big time deficits in, in this game. In for Coulthard, in for Lowndes, and look at the way that Fabian threw that Lockwood entry in there. He actually slid through the pit lane entry, full-blown <laughs> sprint car speedway style. Okay, That's Rick Kelly. Nice and easy. He made, a, we've got a pit lane. he made a, a good game, Rick Kelly. I reckon if we made that pit lane entry just about a metre wider, they'd race okay, themselves through there. <laughs> Okay, this is critical. Alex Premier coming in. He's got some loose body work on the left-hand side rear panel of Fujitsu Carbon. Let's watch these. Cool target quick. Now, Rick Kelly's made a very efficient stop here. He's come out not very far from Fabian Kultar. In behind, in behind, in behind, in behind, in behind. They're telling you what to do, Craig. Thanks, mate. Good boy. So it's in behind. Hey, Cole, guys, we heard that. Keep going. Watch out for Jamie. Pit lane exit. Pit lane exit, Jamie. I don't know how much Craig wanted to do what he was being told to do. No, but he has to. So Kelly made a gain. He's actually closer to the back of that group of cars than he was, and there's still a lot of vehicles. There's nine of them yet to take their compulsory tyre stop. So a little bit of shuffling's gone on here. The notable one among them is Mark Winterbottom. That was a disaster. That right rear couldn't get it on. They made the decision to change to a different wheel tyre unit. Got it back on. It was only a couple of seconds delay, but that's a long time in this business at the moment. So that's your effective top three now. Fabian Coulthard, Craig Lowndes and Jamie Winkup. Had their dramas in this area. Had problems in Adelaide and then Mark had another problem having to clear David Wall who was on the approach at Brad Jones Racing. Wall meantime has done the fastest lap of the race. Correction, he's done the fastest time to the first sector on this lap of the race. Jason Bright's the leader. Now Bright's notorious for running long when he doesn't have track position, so don't expect to see Jason rushing in in a hurry. Yeah, and I think the interesting dynamic, you just saw Mark Winterbottom shaking his head as he's going down the pit lane. And that's a dynamic for a race driver that you don't want to be in. I mean, the level of concentration required, particularly in a place like this, you don't need to be hot-headed and frustrated about things that happen in the pit lane. You're 100% right, Marco. Those, those things, when he worked that hard, he made a brilliant start. He put pressure on Winkup. He fired down the inside. He was in the lead. You lead the motor race. You come in, and all of a sudden, he's a safety car out. Safety car out now. But all of a sudden, after a pit stop, you are back in the field. You're going to be five or six positions away from where you rightfully should be. Now, our timing and scoring's gone yellow. So they're about to deploy the Chrysler Petters STP safety car. There's debris on the racetrack. We saw a shot before of one of the Benzes and the rear under tray, the diffuser was hanging on that car awkwardly. And I saw some other bits as well. Look at that. So that doesn't look good. And uh, it's about to be a pass under a yellow flag there, which will be a drama from whosoever car we're looking from. Guys, it is so tight at the top of this competition. And uh, just with Tim Edwards, Tim, that uh, pit stop, not what you needed today. No, nah, I mean, obviously, um, cross-threaded wheel nut. We don't know why. You know, we've had far too many of them this year, and it's just not acceptable. So, obviously, we'll have to review it all after the race again. But, yeah, I don't know what. I, don't, I just don't know what to say. It's just unacceptable. Thanks, mate. Tell by the tone of Tim's voice that he's gutted, and he's right. It is unacceptable. They'll debrief heavily on that. There's a little bit of time to our next event when we head to Australia's top end at Darwin. Beautiful weather in the winter up there. Larky, you're on the spot for the Jason Bright stop. I want to show you this stop here. Now, you see two guys being used here. One, two. 
third guy go, go, go. holding a spare tyre just in case, or if they flat spot a tyre, they can throw it on the front. Now at half time, or in between the two races, I want to show you a little bit more about how critical that timing is, and when we compare it against those blokes up the pit lane, the Red Bull guys who use three blokes on the back wheel. Quite clever when you're only changing two tyres, because remember, normally you have a guy on each corner. Exactly, like a really well done. That was a good effort, and those stops from the Red Bull guys are the best in the category. Stay with us. So the Chrysler has control of the field now. The Pet is STP safety car. Okay, just confirming uh, safety car. We've got uh, metal on the track uh, through. Turn 16, just hold it tight all the way through 16, 17. So Fabian Coulthard, two-time winner already this season. It's been well documented, Bradley Jones racing. We've got a grip on this car in the future and change their fortunes. Jason Bright, his teammate, also successful this season. So four race wins between them. David Wall has also been showing a lot of good pace and has been in the action as well. So let's run you through this order. While they clear the uh, debris on the track, it is car 14 at Coulthard first, Lowndes, Jamie Wincup, Rick Kelly. Garth Tanda is fifth after starting 10th. Jonathan Webb, Techno Darrell Lee. Commodore, Mark Winterbottom had the race lead, now seventh, Jason Bright, is eighth, Scott McLaughlin is ninth, and Will Davison is in tenth. We always say what a complex sport this is, but those sorts of mistakes are so costly. The Factory Ford team this year have had some dramas with wheel nut cross threading and the wheel nut being caught in the wheel. And you can see the disappointment on Mark Winterbottom's face when he was driving out of pit lane. He will be incredibly frustrated by the one to seven slip. What a great sight. You are high above turn one, looking down along the main straightaway there, the totem pole on the right hand side feature of American circuits. There's a couple of them around here. That's the hill up there at turn one. One of the favourite spots for the fans. They get to see the fall away as they go down towards down turn two and towards three, four, five and six with the cars left, right, left, right at maximum pace. So that's a little bit of the under tray at the rear of the car. It hangs down beneath the rear bumper and it's uh, right in the middle of the track so it hasn't been removed at this stage. That's the reason for the safety car intervention. So at the moment, Rick Kelly, as a result of a uh, very efficient pit stop, made a gain there, together with the fact that uh, Winterbottom obviously had that slip up in the pit lane. <laughs> so it's the view from David Reynolds' car, who's, who's just giving Tim Slade a little bit of a help along there to remove that bodywork that's hanging off. That under tray, and there it is. It just saved a pit stop. Well done, Dave. Yeah. Very sportsmanlike. Well, just with Brad Jones at the moment, of course, the big question, Brad, is can Fabian hold out Lounsey? Well, I hope he can. I, he, he certainly did an excellent job yesterday with the gears behind him and held him out. And I think if you can do that, you've probably got as good a chance as any holding uh, Lounsey out today. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> good stuff. We look forward to seeing this. Me too. So, the safety car now is reducing speed back to 80 kilometres an hour, 50 miles per hour bringing the field under control, no more weaving to warm tyres, no more accelerating and braking to try and keep brake temperature. The cars form a single file. For the moment, they're under the control of the safety car and then the safety car peels in and Fabian Coulthard has the call until the safety car is in the lane. Now, what this does do is it gives Mark Winterbottom at least an opportunity to fight a condensed field, but he has lost critical track position. So they're starting to get itchy now as the safety car makes its way towards the pit lane entry. There he is. The car's gone in. Call comes on the race management channel from our race director, Tim Schenken. 
Fabian Coulthard has the call. He's a cool customer and he's showing a very cool head this year and that was excellent from Fabian Coulthard. He's shooting away from Craig Lowndes up to turn one so he will have no pressure at all on this restart lap but there is pressure for Rick Kelly and Garth Tander side by side almost making contact. It leaves Tander hung out wide but he'll crisscross because the Nissan couldn't turn it in quick enough. The problem for Rick with the, the lacking straight line speed is he had to drive right up the inside in the gutter, which makes the corner radius so awkward for him. He just understeered wide on cold tyres. He just couldn't get the car to turn, and he's lost a couple of spots. And it was a bad restart. I mean, Rick's restart then, he was four or five car lengths from the car in front. So the great restart was called that. The Red Bull restarts weren't that great, but Rick Kelly's was really bad. It's pretty graphic, isn't it, looking at those cars leap over that curb. So nice job for Coulthard, just earned himself a little breather for the first half of this lap. It means that he can focus forward and not be quite so concerned about what's going on in his periphery. He'll be catching glimpses of that Red Bull Holden in the background at the moment. So Jonathan Webb, good jump here to fourth position. In fact, he's got a margin over Garth Tander now. Scott McLaughlin was held out wide then, that was awkward for him. Much stronger today than yesterday in the whole racing team Commodore in position five. Had the whole family in Western Australia for the big Wally World Tour, so he's decided literally to just jump straight in and out of the United States. He's not doing any holidaying or any other sightseeing in this part of the woods. Many of the drivers are. Lots of them will go to the Coke 600. Lots of them will go to the 97th running of the Indianapolis 500. Look at Van Gisbergen up the inside of turn one, done on Jason Bright. And McLaughlin's held out wide on the oil there as well. Now he's off on the verge of the track on the Astro turf. So Winterbottom gets that slot back. James Courtney tucked in in 12. There's a bit of angst brewing in this little pack. Right now, screens now. 10th back to about 16th. They're all grouped together. You watch this for airtime of a V8 supercar, more than 1,300 kilograms. Hits the kerb, takes off, and then huge impact and load on landing. What amazes me about the shot is that wherever you focus, whether it's at the front of the car, the tyre, the rear suspension, whatever, everywhere you see extreme stress. And it's hard to imagine how engineers can calculate all the right sort of loads and how to build things in the appropriate way to deal with that. So well wide and that's costly there for Rick Kelly. Got escorted. He got escorted. So Winterbottom was down the inside. He may not have been able to get it turned properly anyway, but Winterbottom and Kelly then battling now. Van Gisbergen at turn 19, putting pressure on. Rick has to cover. Second last corner, he's moved it across. This is going to be bad. Down the inside. Good move, so Rick's caught up now in these guys. And that mistake from the restart has cost him. Still way to go. He's got trouble written all over it. They're all zigzagging everywhere. That was Eric Pender asking Rick just to settle down, relax. They've got a long history. They know each other well, those guys. But it's hard to ask somebody to relax when he's under maximum attack. Matty, this is probably the most crucial job of the day, is smashing up this dry ice to go in the car. This will ultimately keep the drivers cooler, and it's so important at the moment. They were fried yesterday, so hopefully this is going to keep uh, Fabian and, uh, and Bridie nice and cool. <laughs> Swing by and grab that. <laughs> we remarked yesterday in the middle two races just how smashed up the drivers were and how they're so used to driving in extreme heat under extreme conditions but there was something very different about this place and just it's the this. workload as well. That was contact, pretty significant contact before they get to the braking point at turn one, that's 240 k's and as a result of the zigzagging that I made reference to, Rick Kelly has now been shown the bad sportsmanship flag for blocking so if he does it again that means he'll cop a black flag. Yeah, and you remember, boys, in yesterday's race, uh, Rick Kelly actually ran out of fuel. Now, remember, everyone's got, you know, they fill their cars up. 
we know it's a 100 kilometre race. Why did he run out of fuel? I assume they've got a little bit of extra fuel dialed into that engine to give it the little bit of power that they're looking for. So to make the end of the race, I'm suspecting they've probably taken a little fuel out of it and he seems to be coming under a lot more fire in a straight line and that's a hard day out. Yeah, I, I agree. Like The only problem with this one is that he put himself back too far and, and the restart wasn't good enough and then he's under fire from too many of those guys so he did it to himself he's back in eighth now the car's probably fast enough to be fourth or fifth he was in front of jonathan webb and webb put a nice move on him that was a good bit of racing but he probably deserves to be up further focus your attention the box on the right here just how much work there is for the driver on this racetrack just constant wheel work. Oh, it's a little moment there also for Will Davison. You've only got to catch the curb the wrong way and you find yourself a bucket of trouble. He's and got more him. trouble. This time he got him. Scott has a look to the right. And also in the mix there is James Courtney. So you can't get involved in too much of that at the moment. This is just great. Look at the bottleneck of cars involved in this. It's Courtney, McLaughlin, Davison, Caruso, Mostert, Moffat, Todd Kelly, David Reynolds. I mean, it's a roll call. Sorry about that. You think there's a bit of sensory overload That's for Scotty McLaughlin at the moment? Go, sensory mate. overload for us. Did you hear that? Richard Holway. He said, sorry about that. He said, well, that's what you're out there for, mate. That's exactly right. He's a great young talent. He's out there to race. Get on with it. Fantastic. Now, oh, this is big. Big news here. Fabian Coulthard under investigation for failing to maintain speed at the start of the race. Now he leads at the moment, he's just done the fastest lap of the race, he's got 0.8 of a second margin. Fabian Coulthard and his group at Brad Jones Racing for this Lockwood entry are going to have to argue their case at the end because he may have jumped early. Wow. There's always something going on. In fact, it's just underneath the area where we're working in the Circuit of the Americas administrative area, the Circuit of the Americas building administration. And I've seen a never-ending stream. stream of team managers rolling their eyes as we go down to talk to competitors. Not too many leave with a smile. No, it's uh, not happy days down there for much of the time. 52 degrees is the track temperature, which is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. It's hot. And this is what the drivers talked about last night. Hot, humid, high work rate, the constant wheel work was like I said at the top of the show, everybody got a real wake-up call about the job they had to do yesterday in race 13. All the smiles and the high-fiving and isn't it great to visit America soon gave way to, ooh, this is hard work. Exactly. We said in a 95 second lap, 1 minute 35, 10 seconds of that lap is in a straight line. So 87% of the lap, you're turning the car. So you're working hard, it's hot conditions, and the battles are on. The thing that makes it intense is this sort of stuff. As Dave Reynolds fires down the inside of Alex Davison. And what this intensity does, it keeps the heart rate up. And that's wild. We've seen some of the best racing so far. That's Tim Slade right in behind them. They've been battling. So David and Alex are battling for 17th and 18th at the moment. They're behind Rick Kelly. They're effectively teammates. Those cars built by the same organisation at Ford Performance Racing, they're in the same garage. Last night I spoke to both of the drivers and they said both cars are doing exactly the same thing, which in their opinion was the wrong thing. They couldn't get connected to the track. They had two very different balance conditions in different sections of the racetrack that made the cars awkward to drive and it doesn't look like they've been able to get totally on top of those problems. Mark Winterbottom has certainly made a gain today. He looks certainly, certainly quicker than he did yesterday. But, uh, Time way and the pit stop is an absolute disaster for him. So, Jamie Wincup on board with him at the moment. Watch how much goes on here, just trying to make sure that you keep that car guided to the precise location around this racetrack. And that's a great view of the never ending right hander that we've been talking about 16 through to 17 through to 18. Now back on to 19, you mentioned that it's another sneaky incline, it is, it's a 10 metre rise from the bottom of 19 to the top of yeah, turn mate, 20 before they get it straight. The bring, so the front of rear bar, down so that call there from Mark Dutton is just to 
put some more compliance in the car, allow it to just roll around a little more, front and rear, be a little easier on the tyre, not slide the car as much. It's actually been nice recovery here for Win Cup, who at one stage looked like he was falling faster than the Australian dollar. Or falling asleep in the team. <laughs> Richard Rowland will go and wake him up now. That'll be... Hey! <laughs> well done! <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it is only morning back home. I mean, he's jumping out of bed. It's an interesting. Uh, look, those top three cars, they have dominated the podium all weekend. Today it's a different order, but there's a question mark hanging over Fabian Coulthard, remember? And Lowndes, Craig Lowndes in position two, is reeling him in slowly but surely. Just in this phase of the race. Car 14 under investigation at the restart. Maintaining speed. So six laps to go. One lap 22 out of 27. So time-wise, gap's 0.8 of a second. But as you say, from her Lowndes is chipping away. So Fabian had his uh, first win in a V8 supercar race three down in Tasmania. And that was a great moment for him and for Brad Jones Racing. Five to go, keep it up, you can get up it. So he's top 15 again. Remarkable entry to this sport at the top level. Matty, just with Brad Jones and Fabian under investigation for not maintaining speed on the restart. Brad, much in it? Yeah, well, I think there's a little bit in it. We had a miscommunication here, and Phil thought they were saying that there was clear um, that the safety car was in pit lane, and it wasn't. So we got on the radio, told him straight away. He got it back down to 80, or well, I don't know that he went over 80, but he, he maintained his speed and he ran it a long way as to not get any advantage out of it. So while I feel that it's, you know, technically it's line ball, I think that what Fabian did was balance the whole thing up and I don't think when you saw the restart, I don't think he got any advantage out of it. So we'll see what happens after the race. Thanks, Brett. Quietly confident, would you say Yeah, that? I, I think... There was a communication issue there. Brad is accepting that there was some drama attached to it, but it, what he's actually saying is that the benefit and any advantage was negated by Fabian coming back. So I, overall, if you go back to the stewards and you say, listen, what's the intention of the rule? Did I get an advantage? No. Did I breach the rule? Probably yes. So it'll be interesting to see what they say. drive-through penalty for car 34 Alex Prima for spinning wheels in the middle of the pit stop. So the Frenchman is going to have to tour the pit lane as he sees that black flag on the uh, starter's roster. I'll enjoy that. It's currently 21st. So Coulthard, Lounge, Wing Cup, Webb, Tander, Van Gisbergen, Winterbottom down the inside, David Wall, big break locker. Just almost got to Davison with that one. So he got it done. Rick Kelly, a lot less grip on the inside of the road up there, plus the fact that they're turning. And it's got a rise change there, so it's got more of it, but the hill profile is worse on the inside. That's why they slightly drive to the right. So that kind of lock up for that length of time. Front brakes on David Wall's car, very likely to put a flat spot on the tire. He's in 19th position at the moment. Tim Slade behind him, then Alex Premer will get the black flag this lap, and there's Alex making a move down the inside cleanly on to Tim Slade, and he holds worth in behind. I don't know why I'd be trying to do that, because you're about to travel through the pit lane and you actually slow both of you up. When you do it on board now with Chas Mostert, yes. who's attacking Michael Caruso from 14th. Stay here, because this is this never-ending right-hander who delivered on the promise in Western Australia after an impressive test at Morgan Park privately before they went to the Western Australian round of the championship where Chas made his V8 supercar debut for Dick Johnson Racing and Wilson Security. And he got into the top 10, which was the prediction of Mark Winterbottom. He's done a terrific Have to job. Go, mate. Three laps to go, just keep working on him. And he's caught totally 
in a Nissan sandwich. You've got Caruso in front, Moffat and Kelly behind. I think Jason Bright just got Rick Kelly at the top of the hill as he went out of frame there. Or did he? No. <laughs> it's ongoing. It's actually yet to be resolved. It's back the other way again now, so Rick's grabbed the spot. So these two have been just seesawing the last half a lap. across land. That's Van Gisbergen having a dive at Tanda and he gets it done. So that puts Van Gisbergen up to fifth. He's got this real back end speed in these races. We saw him in the mix in the final laps yesterday. Back end speed then when he got hit by Tanda. Back end damage. <laughs> that was Morse code for don't forget I'm here. <laughs> yeah, don't make a mistake. Might have been a return of serve. Maybe. You think like that don't you? That's your mentality, isn't it? That, that was your modus operandi, wasn't it? Taught me everything I know, Mark. One second is the margin. Full card allows. At the moment, he's got him covered. But the question mark hangs. They'll have to argue this one with the judiciary afterwards. Stop chuckling. So Full card allows. Then we cut Webb, Van Gisberg, and Tander. There's the margin. Winter bottom, Rick Kelly, Jason Bright, James Courtney. So two of the Holden Racing Team cars in the 10. I'll be pleased about that because yesterday didn't look like a happy day at the office at all. In between these two races, make sure you stay with us. We've got a lot to show you. I'm going to take you up to the observation tower, show you the sights from up there. We're going to check in at Texas Memorial Stadium, University of Texas, where the Longhorns play. We've sent some drivers out and about, find the best burger in town too legendary speed commentator Bob Varsha will join us as well. He's here this weekend hosting it up for speed and he's going to give us his thoughts on our category, on our racing and this event. Will Davis has been quiet in this race guys. He's he still in 12th at the moment inside the bunker at uh, Brad Jones Racing and that is Chad Reed, famous Australian motocross rider. James Courtney's going to be spending some time with him in the uh, little rest period he has in the States. He's also going to spend, that is, James Courtney time with his friend, Dario friend Kitty, up at the Indy 500, and uh, Belle Isle in Detroit. And the Indy car moves on to the next round there. A few of the boys are off on different tours. Jamie Wincup's doing Vegas. He's also going out to the Grand Canyon and off to San Francisco. So they're all spreading in different directions. Some of them are off to Disneyland, Disney World. It's all going on. But Darwin is our next event. I tried to make the point a little earlier. We love going up there in the Australian oh, winter. It's a great escape. Whoa, that was a great escape. That's not an escape. It's not over yet. No, no, he missed, missed it. it. He missed it. And there's traffic approaching too. He almost ended up in that barrier on the entry to pit lane. Well, that was out of control. So Mostert's made contact. Caruso right out sideways trying to get into the pits. There's more biffing and barging still on. This is like dodging car stuff. It's like a battering ram. Well, Todd Kelly's car yesterday got beaten from pillar to post in the back end of the car. It was quite a mess at the end of the day. It's not looking as bad today as it did yesterday, but it was beaten. It's a great section of road, isn't it? Look at the body language of the cars. They just move around, they slide, they run up on the curb. Great car control. Our cars look very, very good through there. They're very dynamic for big, heavy cars. They've got high grip level. 1,400 odd kilos car and driver. That equates to just a little under 3,100 pounds. It's a lot of mass to control. I love that sequence of corners through 16, 17, 18 because the drivers have really got the cars dancing on the grip edge through there. Well, twice he has finished third to the Red Bull Commodores already this weekend. But for the year, Fabian Coulthard stands above them now. Lounge second and wing cup third. The confusion there, mate, but awesome, awesome pace. Very good work. Great job. Win number three this season for Fabian. Big weekend for him in Tasmania. Got the first win there, then he backed it up. And, uh, Craig Lounge comes up to congratulate. Phil Key. All of the mechanics of Brad Jones Racing, pretty happy with that one. 
Jason Bright also in the top 10. And David Wall, third car in that stable in position 19. But it's all about Fabian Coulthard for the moment. And the follow-up story will be just what happens with the, this safety car question mark. But uh, that's great to see. And it's interesting because the, the domination of podium positions uh, continues to be a Red Bull Brad Jones racing story. So let's run you through the results provisionally. Rick Kelly, the leading Nissan yet again. James Courtney inside the top 10. Mark Winterbottom, after making that early charge and grabbing the lead, ends up in seventh. Chas Mostert forced his way into 13th. Alex Davison there in 18th with Tinny Slade. The best of the Erebus Motorsport, Mercedes AMGs and Scott Pye in 25th. So Fabian Coulthard by just under a second over Craig Lowndes and that puts Lowndes into second on the championship behind Win Cup. So the same three guys on the podium as it was yesterday but in different order now. Brad Jones racing in the Lockwood Commodore. Salute the chequered flag for race 15 of the championship. We started the first race here on pole history books for being the first Australian V8 supercar driver to grab pole position at this circuit. What a terrific weekend for all three of these guys. The Techno Autosport pair of Webb and Van Gisbergen inside the top five together. Baby Kulthar now. Third win of the year, third of his career. <laughs> and he's hooping it up. <laughs> a really popular guy. And we've said it time and time again, Scafie, that once you get a driver who's comfortable with his car and can push it to its limits within that comfort zone, you get results. And that's exactly what's happening to Fabian this year. No doubt. And what's, what's really groundbreaking about it, Matt, is when you've had your first win. There's a level of confidence that he has now. He is driving very, very well. Uh, level of confidence, Kavey. He re looks really comfortable at the moment. Fabian, congratulations. Third win of the year. You are really in a groove this year. Yeah, look, it was uh, a pretty good race. You know, we hustled pretty hard there at the start, and you know, the boys did a fantastic pit shop to get us to jump Frosty uh, in the stop. So, awesome battle. You know, Craig kept me honest the whole race, but, you know, we had enough gap, and we were able to manage it, and, you know, awesome for the boys. So, Lockwood, awesome sponsors. Guys at BJR, what can I ask for? A gutsy win. Well done, Fabian. Enjoy it. Of course, Craig Lowndes. Lowndes, he probably wasn't the start that you wanted out there today, but boy, you kept the pressure on Fabian. Yeah, look at Brett's. It was a great race. We had a really good car. The start wasn't uh, that well. I got a lot of wheel spin. Had to clutch it and it died and we got going. So, uh, but Fabian did a great job. Obviously, uh, um, you know, they've got a bit of speed in that race, but uh, look, you know, them's the brakes. So I'm being consistent. I hope I can get second in the last race, but I just got to wish Chile a happy birthday for yesterday. I forgot to do it. Time zone. Understandable, Lowndes. Good luck for the next race. Cheers, thanks. And of course, Jamie Wincup. Jamie, boy, consistent weekend. You've been on the podium all the way through. Today just, just didn't seem to have the speed that you needed? Uh, yeah, not quite. We um, Obviously, we need to keep, keep making move forward. We um, we didn't move forward anywhere near as quick as the other guys. So, um, full credit to them. They did a great job. We'll, um, we'll make a tune-up for the next one. Bring on race 16. Yeah, race 16. Podium. I'm happy with that. Cheers. Going to grab a quick chat with... I know you're frustrated, mate. That was a great start. Great couple of first laps. Attacking hard and... Uh, Pit stop, we saw you shaking head, mate. You're obviously disappointed. It's happened a few times, mate, but um, yeah, it's frustrating, you know. I think we got the car better then, and the go on tyre that went on was my race one tyre, so we put the wrong tyre on anyway in the end as well. So, a couple of, um, couple of errors in that stop, but uh, I'm frustrated. So, what, you know, we'll work on it. We'll let you have your team debrief now. Pete, if you just come with me, I'll just show you a little bit about how this works. This is Mark's car here, so if you look. Rear wheel, this nut's now undone. You can see there's a safety, little safety thing there. Now, if we turn around and look at the, the gun, you see the little dick in the middle of the, the gun there, that little spike? So when they engage that on there, that pushes that in, which will release the nut. Now, when they go to put the new wheel on, here's a wheel here. Now, remembering these are a control wheel and a control nut. So it's not like FPR have done something different here. This isn't a different wheel or anything. That component over there, the hub that it screws to, is also controlling specification, but I'm not sure about material. So it's possible, I don't know, maybe they've got a different material there that is expanding and contracting at different rates. But when you look inside here, 
you can see this nut via these little spikes here is captured in the wheel so it sits in there. But what's happening with them continually is that first thread, which I can circle and point to right there, that first thread is not engaging properly on the first thread on the hub. And if that doesn't engage straight away, because this is an aluminium, it strips and burrs and gets all horrible and it just won't go on right. So you've got to pull it off and whack another wheel on. And as you always say, Larko, in this sport, in this pit lane, those little things like that add up to disaster in terms of results. So here's the championship point score. Wing Cup still leads. It's 122 the difference. But the difference is that Craig Lowndes has now moved up into second. And the spread from first to tenth points-wise is 446 back to Jonathan Webb. Up to the podium we go with Mark Retta. has gone missing on us again. Here he goes. Take it away, mate. Thanks, Matty. First place driver from Lockwood Racing, Fabian Coulthard. In second place from Red Bull Racing Australia, Craig Lowndes. Our third place driver from Red Bull Racing Australia, Jamie Winker. And representing Lockwood Racing, our winning team is Paul Eddy. Yeah, Paul. Yeah. Making the presentation of our third place trophy is Niall Maxwell, owner of the Niall Maxwell family of dealerships. <laughs> presenting to second place is Mark McKenzie, Circuit of the Americas Guest of Honour. Making the presentation to our winning team is Aaron Childress, Austin Area Manager for Chrysler. And presenting the winning trophy is John Paul DeJoria, Circuit of the Americas, Guest of Honour. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 V8 Supercars Austin 400, race 15 winners. So three out of four races and all of those three guys up there have three trophies <laughs> each. Fabian Coulthard has finally got the one that he wanted, the winner's trophy, but still another 100 k's to go.